sequestration amount from our land. Therefore, we cannot determine the baseline and estimate the actual amount of carbon credit that the land can potentially gain from participating in this program. So we decided to take a different approach. Instead, here we are trying to determine the minimum number of carbon credits that the Casco land needs to receive per acre in order to make entering the carbon market a profitable option. Since the two forest uh, project has different requirements, the costs associated with getting a carbon credit also differ. So basically here are the results after we equate the total cost with total benefit and here are the result of the calculation. And from this, um, as you can see, basically one carbon credit equal to one ton of carbon sequestered from the atmosphere. Here we also believe the landowner is likely to be able to profit from this option. So I just presented to you several options that the Cascale landowner can take. And these options are actually able to combine with each other to further increase the net gain for the landowner. And here are different scenarios that the landowner can consider. So the alternative development option that we chose is hydraulic fracturing. As you can see from the map over here, there is an easy access to our 443 acre of land. However, currently New York State does not approve <coughs> such practice. So here we're only going to present to you some potential financial benefit that the landowner can receive from doing fr fracking. One include the lease that the landowner signed with the oil and gas company. And the other is the royalty payment that the landowner received from basically a fraction of the profit the company get from um, extracting natural gas from your land. And the cost will associate basically with current known risk or unknown risk, which include air pollution and water contamination. However, currently we cannot present you with an actual figure that determine whether it's a net gain or net loss for the landowner. And now I'm going to hand it over to Alex, who's going to present our next case study. How's it work? Hi everyone. Um, wait, how do I change the slide? Okay. Right. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, some of the background information about case study two. The uh, Adirondacks Park is the largest state-level protected region in the country. It encompasses over 6.1 million acres of land. There are more than 3,000 lakes and 30,000 miles of stream and rivers. It is also home to an incredible amount of biodiversity. Over 53 known species of mammals, 35, uh, 35 known species of reptiles, and hundreds of known bird species. What is most unique about the park is that there is an extremely close relationship between nature and 130,000 inhabitants. This is the largest park in the nation and the only one where you will find this unique patchwork of public and private land. Roughly 58% of the park right now is currently in the hands of private landowners. On the first day of our capstone seminar, we learned that one of our own uh, group members, Molly, uh, will one day inherit 500 acres of uh, property in, Ad in the Adirondacks. This property, we'll, uh, we'll call it here Wintergreen Lake, consists of a mixture of hardwood forest, a large pond, and 22.3 acres of certified wetland. The land has never been touched. It has been preserved for over a long time. However, the tax uh, the annual tax burden is becoming increasingly difficult to bear. There is a fear in her family that unless the land can generate its own source of income, eventually it will become too expensive to maintain at its current state. Other private landowners are also facing the temptation to subdivide the land and sell it for real estate development. It is uh, it, if this unfortunate trend continues, it will eventually disrupt the ecological continuity that the Adirondacks Park has managed to preserve for so many years. Okay. Uh, natural capital. Uh, Wintergreen Lake has a remarkable amount of natural capital in the forms of carbon, wetland, and endangered species. With these assets in mind, we explore the various ecosystem services that this land could accommodate. All right, now I'm going to talk about option uh, for, credit, uh, for carbon credits. Like the Car Cascade case study, established carbon credits is an option available to the Wintergreen Lake property. 
Using the improved forest management methodology, we estimated a minimum amount of carbon credits per acre necessary for making entry into the carbon market profitable, and this number is 6.36. This figure takes into consideration the costs associated with both uh, credit verification and market uh, participation. <coughs> now I'm going to talk about tax incentives. It, establishing a conservation easement and participating in New York State forest tax program would also be a viable option for the Wintergreen Lake property. Calculations for estimating them would be similar to those put forth in the Catskill study. Under the conditions of 480A, a DEC approved forest management plan that schedules timber extraction and thinning must be agreed upon by the landowner. If such an agreement were to exist for this particular property, it would need to reflect the fact that the property has been selectively logged uh, within the last 30 years. So any capacity for extraction um, will need to be sometime in the future. Because of these circumstances, uh, 480A serves as a future tax reduction option for this particular property rather than a current one. Now I'm going to talk about biodiversity banking, which includes wetlands and endangered species. Since, every, uh, since Wintergreen Lake has an endangered species presence and a measurable acreage of wetland, we explore biodiversity banking as a potential source of income. Wetland credit banking and endangered species banking are not currently established in New York State. However, just because it doesn't, ex it doesn't exist right now, doesn't mean it will not exist in the future. We estimated potential costs and benefits based on existing markets in other states. There are approximately 22 acres of wetland at Wintergreen Lake. If this wetland uh, are expended and enhanced, they can qualify for wetland mitigation credits. Wetland credits can be worth anywhere from $3,000 uh, $3, per credit to $600,000 per credit. The large range is due to the fact that wetland mitigation is done within close proximity of the buyer's development site. Thus, the market adjusts the price considering the ecosystem service that the wetland does and as well as the local demand for wetland cre uh, mitigation credits. We use a safe estimate of 10 acres of potential enhancement and multiply this number by the price of average non-title cred uh, wetland credits in Northern Virginia, which is about $138,000. Without accounting for the benefit of existing acreage of wetland, the enhanced wetland would be worth $1.38 million. Taking into consideration investment costs, which includes biodiversity assessment report and annual, annual monitoring reports, the net gain established wetland credit is very significant. We make similar projections for species banking credit. There are three federally recognized endangered species identified in Warren County where the, par uh, where the property is located. And the species are the Indiana bat, the bog turtle, and cardinal blue, which is a type of butterfly. The average price for credit of habitat for a, sim a single species is around $32,000. The estimated worth of these species credits depend on how much habitat is identified as being necessary for a species to flourish. Considering the investment cost, which is similar to those necessary for establishing the wetland uh, credits, we can estimate a, a dramatic net gain for establishing endangered species credit. Right. In conclusion, after we analyzed each of the ecosystem services and tax incentives available to the Wintergreen Lake property, we boiled our findings down to three relevant scenarios. Uh, there are present ecosystem service option, future ecosystem service option, and the alternative, which is to subdivide and develop. The present option includes certified carbon credits alongside a conservation easement to sell on the California market. Future option includes establishing two types of biodiversity credits to bank and sell, and then harvest timber under guideline of New York State Forest Tax Program. Each of these, uh, uh, e each of these ecosystem markets offers source of revenue to the landowner as well as an alternative uh, to dividing and selling the land. Um, now to Allison. So in compiling data for these case studies, our team encountered several data gaps that restricted the comprehensiveness of our cost-benefit analyses. These data gaps included intellectual mechanisms that had not been fleshed out in the literature or applied in the marketplace in New York State, as well as raw data that we were unable to attain for the tracts of land that we studied. 
Most data gaps we encountered fell under the umbrella of additionality. To gain credit for an ecosystem services project, one must prove the additionality of their actions or inactions. This concept refers to the additional benefit garnered from the project that is beyond the baseline status. For example, if one wishes to receive annual carbon credits for carbon sequestration on their land, they must be able to show the baseline amount of carbon being sequestered, as well as the additional carbon stored from their project. For our land, we could not obtain historical and current carbon sequestration data, nor do we have data for the conversion rate. In the California carbon market, the notion of common practice is used as a reference point for baseline estimation. Common practice is the average amount of carbon held in similar or surrounding regions. While common practice quantities are known, there is no data that allows us to determine <coughs> how much additional carbon we would store on either pilot project land space. Without this information, we cannot predict the number of carbon credits these lands would receive upon entering a carbon credit forest program. And without knowing the number of credits, we cannot calculate the exact cost and benefits of entering the carbon market. Similarly, we lack the appraised value of 